Hi everyone, in this tutorial we're going to be focusing on how to draw long white fur in pastels. Now for this section of the tutorial I'm going to be taking the ears of this white poodle that I've just finished for a full length tutorial on Patreon. At the end of this video I'm going to be sharing a top tip to prevent the most common mistake that we can often do when drawing any type of white fur regardless of the texture. But now let's jump straight into this ear section of this white longer fur tutorial. Okay, so first up and the first most important element of any white fur is the base layer. Now this is something that I put so much focus on in the real time version. You've got over 10 hours of footage there on Patreon because this base layer will make or break the portrait in terms of how realistic and how much depth is being able to be captured in that white fur. Now what I actually have in the Patreon version is a palette camera in the corner of the screen so that all of my Patreon members can see every single colour mix that I do, how much of one colour I add because this is really crucial. The one main focus here throughout this tutorial, regardless of the element that I was working on, is white fur is never truly white. There is always going to be a tonal value, so a slight shadow to it and also a slight colour. In this case, the ears had a little bit of a yellower, creamier tint, so I had to make sure that I applied that not only to my base layer, but also with glazes, which you're going to see throughout the rest of this tutorial. Now, colour selection and how to identify a specific colour in a reference photo is something that I know a lot of people struggle with. So this is one of the areas that I focus on every single Patreon tutorial. So here you could see I was comparing two pencils and I was explaining for my Patreon members the difference between these two colours, why I might be tempted to use one other one um, compared to another. And with all of my Patreon tutorials, you get a full material list. So every single pencil that I've used, all of the pan pastels, if I use any soft pastel sticks and so on, there really are no secrets. But for this, I did want to make sure that if there was a specific colour that I was using, that I really explained why I was using that colour. And that's not just for this tutorial, that's also throughout all of my other Patreon ones as well. Now I've started to build up my detailed layers here, you can see why the pan pastel base layer to the side of it has been so important. When I'm working on longer, whiter fur like this, I really don't want there to be any harsh start and stop point, and that's regardless of any layer that I'm working on, right from that first base layer all the way to my final details. So you can see here just how I focus on very small sections at one time. I'm not looking at each layer individually. I'm doing that, but only on one small section at a time. I do find that this is a far more effective way of working. And if you've seen my other videos here on YouTube, you'll know that that's how I tackle any subject, regardless of the medium that I'm working in. So if you do find any part of the process too overwhelming, it's usually because you're working on too much of a larger section. There are times when I'm only focusing on one or two square inches of that one part of the reference photo. So before we move on to the second ear, where I'm going to speak more about the glazes and how you can adjust that colour through the use of a glaze, if the tips and techniques that I've shared in this video so far have been useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up and a like because it makes a huge difference. If you also want to get notified of future content, then hit the subscribe and the bell button. So just as with the first ear, my first aim is the base layer. Now I don't want to be focusing on any kind of detail at all. Now that we've got the left ear in place, you can really see how much of a layering process this was. The biggest tip when drawing fur like this of any colour is make sure that we're drawing the fur that's closest to the skin first and building up from there. If we try drawing in the details, the little bits of fur that are sat on top, the sort of fur that we would be stroking if we were to touch this animal, if we draw those first, the fur is not going to have as much depth in our portrait. It's really important that those top details are left till our last layers. It is very tempting to jump into our details and skip this current stage that I am working on, but the fur, it just will not have nowhere near the same amount of soft three-dimensional texture. Now a quick mention, I do have part one of this tutorial where I'm focusing on the face, the shorter, whiter fur, here on YouTube as well as a time-lapse tutorial with voiceover. So if you'd like to see how I approach that type of fur texture, packed full of tips and techniques, then I will link that in the description below as well. Okay, so let's get on to glazes. Now glazes make a real difference and I did use them quite a lot in this portrait. So first off, what is a glaze? 
So for me, a glaze is a light layer of color, in this case, a pastel pencil, and I am wanting to apply a light layer of that color over the top of my previous layers underneath. When you're working with glazes like this, the results you're gonna get are gonna vary massively depending on the amount of pressure you're applying to that pencil. Too much pressure and you're just gonna make that fur look whatever shade of color you've selected. So in this case, it was a bit more of that paler yellow color. I really didn't want that. I still want this fur to look white, but as we can see from this tutorial here, white fur is never truly white. So it was just about tinting that layer underneath. Now for the last few months on Patreon, I have been uploading all of my tutorials with a voiceover as I am working so that every single decision is explained thoroughly. It's very step by step. Now this is one of the main reasons why I like doing it for this type of fur texture as well because glazing is so much easier to get that concept of if you can see it in action in real time because there you can really see exactly how to use that pencil, where you should be holding it on the barrel in order to get that light pressure. Pressure. there are many things that can influence that but if you are trying to do a glaze and you're feeling that that color is just far too pigmented and you've completely flooded that detail with that color it's a really good indication that you've put too much pressure on that pencil so the next pastel tutorial that I upload to YouTube is going to be the next section so we're going to be focusing on the body the texture there is completely different and the fur is far more curlier like what you would typically expect of a poodle so that is going to be coming up on YouTube very soon. So at the beginning of this video, I mentioned the one mistake that can happen when drawing white fur. So let's jump into the first example. Now this is a portrait that I did a couple of years ago and this is available also on Patreon. I do have a tutorial, a shorter tutorial on YouTube as well. I'll link that in the description. So what is the common mistake that can happen? And this is that we go too dark. Now, if we put our base layer in place and it is far too dark, this fur is gonna look a little bit dirty and it just won't have the same impact that we want the white fur to have. Look at this example here. So the one on the left is my portrait. This is what the finished result looked like. On the right, I've darkened up my whites. So you can see here that if I went in with a darker pan pastel base layer, that this is what I would have ended up with because even though we can layer our lights over darks with pastels, especially on pastel matte paper, we will only be able to get that light color a certain degree brighter. If you are a little bit more reserved with that color you put down to start with, and you're a little bit more with your mid-tone color rather than your shadows, you'll then find it easier to be able to get that white fur looking brighter. Now there are exceptions, as always, there is no one set rule in art. So take this example here, another portrait I did last year. So Buster the Bulldog here, the white on the face was very bright. It was really quite white. There wasn't a lot of my dark shadows in place. There was a little bit more on the creases around the nose, as you can see, but the white mark in between his eyes was nice and bright. I therefore wanted to make sure that I did capture that in my portrait. So this in this case, where I have a reference photo where the fur might be a little bit overexposed, I will work from light to dark. Now this mistake with making our base layers too dark really can affect the portrait in a negative way. Have a look at the photo on the right where I have darkened my whites just like what I've shown with the cat. This fur now on the right hand side, it doesn't have nowhere near the same impact. The portrait also looks flatter. Now I haven't changed any part of the brown fur, I haven't touched the eyes at all. But there isn't as much of a wow factor when you look at the portrait on the right and that's because my contrast isn't is it's just not correct. My highlights on the left hand side are really nice and bright, but I haven't gone really dark on that base layer, which has meant that I have then been able to capture subtle contrast. Now contrast is something that I talk about in every single tutorial, both on Patreon and here on YouTube. We want good contrast, we want our highlights to be bright and we want the shadows to be dark, but only where it's needed. If you've got a reference photo where the fur does look a little bit softer, you don't have as many shadows there, draw it as it is, draw what you see. If you would like to see how I tackle different types of white fur, then I do also have this one section of Buster's portrait available on Patreon as well. If that's of interest, as I've mentioned, my Patreon is in the description below, but I do also have a version of this here on YouTube and I will pop a link to that as well in the description.
but if the tips and techniques that I've shared in this video have been useful, as I've mentioned, I'd really appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up. And if you do have any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below because I'm more than happy to help if I can. Here is a photograph of the finished portrait and as you can see the texture on the body is very different, far more curlier, so that's going to be coming up on YouTube very soon. If my slower in-depth tutorials in pastels or acrylics are of interest I will link my Patreon in the description below. I also have a Patreon library on my website where you can see all of the tutorials available before you sign up. There are lots there to choose from. I focus on a mixture of domestic pets and wildlife subjects so there really is something for everybody. I have a wide range of fur textures of different dog breeds, horses and cats so if you did want to go down the pet portrait commission route then there are many different tutorials there that you could transfer those tips and techniques into your own portraits.